This video is going to be about templates in C++. So templates are a way to write a generic implementation for a class that can be applied to multiple types. So basically what the compiler would do is it would look for all of the different um, types that you passed into the generic template class and it would create implementations based on the types that you pass in. So here you can see that we're passing in an int and a double into two separate array lists. So it would, the compiler would create an implementation where all of the t's here were replaced with the ints and another one where all of the t's were replaced by doubles. And then it would use those classes instead of these template classes. Because these template classes, they're not actually, they're not actually real classes. They're just a way of telling the compiler how to create an implementation of the class with a certain type. So if we compare let's go back here. If we compare templates in C++ to generics in Java, you can see that there's a slight difference. So here we have array list of int, which is a primitive, and here we have array list of integer, which is the object wrapper of int, which is a primitive. So in Java, in order to use generics with primitive types, you have to do what's called auto boxing, which is basically just wrapping the primitive type in an object so that you can put it in an object array. So the way that generics work in Java is that all of the type annotations are just removed and all of these just become object arrays. And then when it's compiled, it just has implicit casts back to whatever type you pass in. So whenever you want to use the actual type, like whenever you want to have a reference of an object of this type, it'll just put in an implicit cast from type capital O object to whatever type you're passing in. So here we have an array list of integers this is going to be stored in an array of objects, not of integers. And then whenever we add something, this is going to get converted first, since this is a primitive. It's going to get auto boxed into capital I integer. And then this is going to be casted into an object, capital O. And then that's going to be stored in the object array. And then if we want to print it out, it'll just call to string because Two strings, an object method, and all of these integer double, they all extend object. In C++, you don't have you don't have like a super class that all objects are like, like subclasses of, so you can't really implement generics in that way. So that's why templates have to be dealt with at compile time, and you can't just have like some class that you're just gonna cast it to and then store it as that. Uh, okay, I'll just go through this implementation of earliest. So here you can see that we're using a raw pointer. This is generally frowned upon in modern C++ because now we have what's called smart pointers that do not require you to manually deal with memory. I'll talk about that in a later video. And then here it's called a member initialization list. Basically, after your normal constructor, like the um, after the ending parentheses, you have a colon, and then you just have the um, the member variable name, and then in parentheses you have the variable that you want to set this equal to. And then you can still have like regular stuff in the constructor after that. So here, we're using the new keyword to heap allocate the um, array that we're creating. So heap allocation, as opposed to stack allocation, it's not going to be automatically destructed when the object goes out of scope. So when you go out of scope, the destructor is called, and you have to manually delete whatever you heap allocated. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you're dealing with raw pointers. And that's the reason that 
modern C++ uses smart pointers instead of uh, raw pointers with the new and delete keywords. So this is this is this is a const method, and what const methods guarantee is that you're not changing the the you're not changing any of the member variables inside the method. So what that means is that you can call this method for, with a const reference to the class instance because the compiler knows that you're not going to be changing you're not going to be changing the um the state in any way what is this here so here this is an example of operator overloading you have this is a friend function basically it's just a way of giving private member access to non-member functions so operator overloads are not considered member functions even though they're like they look like they would be members of this class because they're inside the class definition but operator overloads are treated differently so we still want to give it access to the private variables so we mark it as a friend and here I just I implemented it inside of the class definition which you usually don't want to do I just did that for simplicity uh, what else is here so here is const reference as I was talking about before this is basically just an immutable reference to the object so you can't change it in any way here what else? so here when you're resizing the array when you run out of the uh, like storage inside the current array you have to delete the array before you set it to the new array so that's really easy to forget and that's why they again want you to use smart pointers what else is here I think that's everything here Java again J Java is garbage collected so there, there's no need for using the delete keyword manually because once something goes out of scope, all of the objects are reference counted by the JVM. So once the number of references goes to zero, the JVM will garbage collect it and the memory will be freed. So you don't have to worry about memory leaks as much. I think that's everything.